hello uh, once again I'm here uh, my name is Emeka Livingstone I just want to do a follow-up of what I said yesterday the video I made um, I had a, a birthday party of a friend in down just somewhere close to where I'm living in Randallstown here and while we were there I met some friends and we're talking because of my very passionate view about Biafra we we, we had discussions and exchange ideas so from what we discussed I had certain things I could glean from them and I want to use that to talk to IPOP members first of all I'd like to use a, a biblical comparison before I begin to get to Namdi Canon when Jesus came to Jerusalem to preach the gospel, people had come before him, but they did not have much impact on the lives of the Pharisees, the publicans, and the crowd. Because let's take, for example, a person like Judas Maccabees or uh, in the uh, in the Apocrypha, those five uninspired Gospels, which you find in a Catholic Bible, or you talk about uh, um, Barnabas, Barnabas, yeah, Barnabas, or those that were destroyed uh, at uh, the Torah when Jesus made mention of them. Uh, their leaders were against the system, but they had no alternative that could provide answers to questions so when jesus came he had an alternative to one the wicked and uncomfortable roman system of governance that humiliated the jews number two he had an alternative to the pharisaic system of hypocritically saying they were disciples of Moses but never keeping the law so those these two people could not give the Jews a road map to a better life so when Jesus came he began to preach and he he showed them an alternative that means he had an ideology he had an idea he had in mind what he wanted the people to to take home that would be with them all the days of their lives so if you want to follow a leader that leader must be principled like jesus is and must have an ideology jesus's ideology was the message god gave to him from heaven which he taught the Jew, he taught the jews to be an alternative to jewish customs that the pharisees could not fulfill because they were hypocritical or the wicked and fiendish Roman system of governance that put pressure on the people and exerted a lot of taxes and pressure on them. So, in the outer world, I'm talking now, somebody, a leader of an ideology may not be good, but he has an idea. People follow him. How much more somebody who is good, who has principles and has proved it? People should follow him. Um, Chairman Mao Zedong had an alternative to uh, the kind of government other countries were running. An alternative to capitalism. So they brought about so, uh, communism in socialist states like Russia. They brought communism in China. And Mao Zedong was able to garner a lot of support and followership from people because they believed in the man's vision. They stood behind him. They stood strongly behind him. So he was able to accomplish that vision within a short time. Wherever you have voices of dissent in the life of a man that has a vision, an ideology, it delays the progress work to victory 
into entering that frontier of victory and glory that we are striving. There are people in IPOB who pay their dues, but they are not entirely on the same page with Mazin Namdekano, and that is wrong. Because it is not just your money that you give. I like that one. But further than that, you must believe in the man's ideology. He has an alternative to what's going on in Nigeria, at least for the Biafrans. I cannot say for the Yorubas or the uh, Middle Belterners, or but I know he has an alternative for the Biafrans. And if you begin to sabotage him from under, if you are in IPOB and any little thing, maybe uh, Mefo did something and some people are siding Mefo and they are going back to Mazin Namdekano, it shows that you are not stable, you are not reliable. Because this guy has proved himself to be a man of his word. I left the government college in 1979, Namdekano just entered that same year. So by all standards, we are not mixed. But that young man has an ideology he has a vision god saw him god saw me sorry but gave it to him so what do i do either i follow his ideology or i stay alone and stop criticizing him i follow his ideology because i know he has something to offer which i don't have because that is my not that is not my area of operation basically my area of operation is preaching the gospel but i have to speak where i see injustice going on killing Christians and then particularizing on Igbos. God didn't make any mistake in making me an Igbo man. And therefore, if it becomes expedient, I have to protect my people. Even if it means talking and putting my life on the line, that is the truth. Nimrod in the Bible had an idea on how he'll gather the whole world and build the Tower of Babel. And people followed him, even though his idea was evil. If you want to work with a man, stop all these bickerings. Work with him. But Namdi Kanu is not just educated, he's a learned guy. And he does his research. He comes out with facts and figures. This mentality of the Igbos not having a king, it's playing negatively into this, this man's struggle for the liberation of us, you and I, in the long run. Not only himself, all of us. I come from Arochuku. It is only in Aru land that you had a king. Until recently, the kingship in Aru was highly reverenced. I remember when Obasanjo came to Aru, I think 1979 or what, or 78, within that period, he visited the king of Aru when he came to East Central State. He visited the kingdom of Arochuku to see the king, the Ezaru. And he's so highly respected because kingship in Aru is by inheritance. It comes from a particular family lineage and therefore they respected the king of Aru. not until when he died as a canoji that we now have uh, an interplay of others who are maybe rich and educated and politicizing the whole thing the man who's supposed to be there is not giving the chance or maybe has political ambition has affiliates the ezar of Arochuku had no political affiliates no ambition therefore obasanjo could leave dodan barracks and come down to Arochuku to respect that man because it's good for a man to be principled I know that the um, Oba of Benin was highly respected, but if you take his historical antecedent, he was the one that advised Gowon to dishonor the agreement that was reached in Aburi between General Ankara, between Ojuku and Gowon, in the presence of General Ankara, the most senior military officer in the West African sub-region. It was the former Oba of Benin that died. He was the one or Oba or Polo Polo or what two or whatever he was the one that advised Gowan he was a very senior civil servant not to respect that agreement and that was why Gowan was reluctant in making mention of what they agreed in Aburi when Ojuku had waited for a time and it wasn't coming forth he had to make the procl proclamation and he was considered to be rebellious I want Ibos to come to understanding if you make contribution to IPOP to work don't just give the money by the idea of Namde Kanu. He is the leader the Igbos have now. Every other leader I have seen so far had followership, especially within the communist countries. 
they have followership, but also based on intimidation. Hitler had followership, it was based on intimidation. Nam the Kanu's own is voluntary, voluntary. Everybody is coming out because we have seen a man who can speak the truth, stand by it, pay the price. He listens. Somebody was telling me that uh, he needs to listen to people. Nam the Kanu has never walked alone. I've been following what he's been saying on Facebook. I've been listening to him. He has never walked alone. And when when he is running a program where he talks to people, an interaction, interactive uh, program, people talk. He listens to them and they make their contribution. If it is not buyable, he doesn't buy it. If it is, he buys it. Because he's the leader. He has the vision. He is not going to listen to various voices of dissent. Otherwise, he'll be confused. The young man must have direction and he's maintaining it. That is why I stand by him. I, 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 I'm not going to carry arms to fight. I'm going to speak. I'm going to pray. I'm going to preach. But the truth is, that young man has been doing an excellent job. All those of you who are, those uh, IPO, some IPO members who are not really sure of themselves, you follow this man, follow this man, you have to stand inside one lane with Nam De Kano and let him take us there. Don't be afraid, nothing negative will happen to us the fight for revolution was never said to be easy it was long time consuming and sacrificial he has sacrificed his own so if it becomes expedient for us to make sacrifices at the expense of our life then what is wrong with it why is it that people of our own origin tribal origin fail to understand this thing that we have a leader as Naibu it's not, it's not, it's not a good thing, because even the Jews had kings where we claim to trace our lineage from. The Jews ha had kings in the Old Testament time, until Jesus came. That we don't have any other king again in Israel, because the Bible says the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, because he is the one, he is the anointed one. So the moment Christ came, kingship rested and ended with Christ, as far as. Israel is concerned. They have one king. His name is Jesus Christ. So Igbo land, when we, 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 we came, uh, if you trace our genealogy, I'm from Aruchuku, I can tell you a little bit about the, how the Arus came about as uh, those who came as diaspora from Israel into this place and we still maintained that kingship. But I'm not here to promote the Aru culture. No, put it aside. What I'm saying is we have a a leader his name is Mazin Namdekano don't look at him that you are more intelligent than him or you have more money or you are more exposed because if God wanted he would have left him and would have chosen you when David was chosen uh, when he wanted to be king he ran out into the wilderness 400 men followed him and these men were committed to David they bought his ideology they believed in him this David was a womanizer he had wives but those men were looking at the vision this young man had until later on David was made the king of his, um, um, Judah first before he was made the king of Israel it was the strength he gathered from support from members of the tribe of Judah that gave David impetus to come and the Israelites now said we want to hand over kingship, kingship to you Namde Kano has not said he wants to be the president of Biafra he said he wants the liberation of Biafra why can't we just because because and that we don't cooperate for I know for Ufonyanya, Shulunya, see, why is it that you will always think that it must come from your father's land or your tribe or your village or your local government? We have one young man from Omaya. God has raised him up. Because I've heard him talk about the black man so many times. Yes, I have I have I have, I have a different opinion about the black man from the biblical perspective I, i've written a book called my black biblical heritage you can get it in amazon if you go there if you my black biblical heritage by mecca livingstone i give a, a, an expose about the black man from the biblical perspective so he's only speaking based on the frustrations he has seen the way black men react to situation and circumstances so that one is different but i'm only just telling you that this is what has happened i have a book to that effect but let's get back to the message the message is that this young man has a vision 
don't compare him with any other professor of law or mathematics in Igbo land. For God saw all those men before he chose them the canon. All those men are Bible. They don't have the gods. God saw Shama. He saw Eliab and decided to choose David, who was a shepherd boy in the field. And David turned out to be a good shepherd in Israel. So stop looking now on somebody. We are intelligent people. Let's stand behind the young man. Let him give us Biafra. This was how they sabotaged Dojuku the during the war. He spent his father's money and resources to execute that war. He never ended that. It cost him a lot. It cost him leaving this country, um, um, Nigeria, and running away to Ivory Coast. He went there and became. He had a, 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 a um, um, trucks, tippers that were picking sand and delivering in sight to make money. He brought himself. So this is this is an Oxford trained graduate. So you see how Ojuku humbled himself and still rose up to that level. Namdekano told the same line and even went further. To the extent that he has lost so many things. And yet you see people saying, why must it be him? Oh, let you should go and miss and so person. Is this person that will introduce him? That's that's the mentality of stupidity. Because for a revolution to take place, the man who is going to take handle the revolution must not be popular. It must not be a known personality because known personalities are already corrupted by the system. It must be somebody that is coming from outside who does not like what is going on inside and is coming up with a, a different idea. He's thinking out of the box. That is why when you meet Namdekano, he has the history of Biafra at his fingertips. I have been educated a lot by what he has said concerning Biafra. Why are you against him? How do you expect Igbos will be free from dominance? of the Fulani hegemony or possibly the Islamic uh, agenda. How do you think? If Obiano wants to be recognized that they are the ones who are the governors, you have to gather them. All these are corrupted political vagabonds. We don't need them. We need somebody who is clean, who is, you, you can't buy him. He's standing on his own because if Nabdekanu wanted money, he would have allowed Nigeria to buy him. If they give him one 100 billion naira, that's enough to take care of him all the days of his life. He refused to take that because he's considering you and I. So why should I, Mecca Livingstone, sabotage Namdekano? I have watched him, I've listened to him, I've heard him speak, I've heard his researches, I've heard his presentation. I say, yeah, this guy's got stuff. And I'm backing him up for the liberation of my own people, including me. I'm not doing Namdekano any favor. On the contrary, he put his life on the line to do us a favor, and we appreciate it. So, as much as you are contributing to IPOP financially, please stay in the same page with the leader of IPOP. His name is Mazen Namdekano. Encourage him. Let me tell you something. Elijah was one of the most difficult masters I have ever seen in life. I read in the Bible. He, he made life very, very difficult for Elijah. He had his shortcomings. El Elijah was a man that could easily get offended. Mm. Uh, but El Elijah did not look at those shortcomings. He, he followed his ogre till the end. When he told him, give me a double portion of yourself, he told you, you have asked the hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me being taken, it shall be done unto you. He, he didn't give it to him free. And that guy saw him when he was leaving. That was how he got it. He, 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 he took that mantle. So you must follow a man. This guy is not difficult to deal with. Anybody that finds them the difficult to do it is because that person does not stand in the truth in this whole issue. Nam the Kano will not hide anything. He wants it straight, just like that. It is the same in the Christian faith. If you are a preacher of righteousness, you don't like doing kona kona, a lot of people will not like you. People like those preachers that will come and tell them the thing they want to hear, how they prophesy to them that their bank account will just increase, that, that girl is putting on green pants, your father's father, his name was this, this thing, uh, will op operate and then remove them, you make money. People just want to hear things that will encourage them in their flesh. They don't want to serve God. And that's the same thing with this young man. When Winston Churchill came up in Britain, Britain was in dire need of a leader. He came up. They had more, more other intellectuals than Winston Churchill. But they stood behind him and encouraged the man until the war was executed. It was when he wanted to contest election that he failed. So it shows that the, the British were not stupid. 
A man had an idea, they followed him. Mussolini had an idea, they followed him. Hitler had an idea, they followed him. Uh, Lenin had an idea, they followed him. Ma uh, Matama Gandhi had an idea, people followed him. Um, Chairman Mao Zedong had an idea, they followed him. King John Ons father had an idea, they followed him. And most of these men were wicked men. Ibn Kanu is not wicked, he's not that kind of person. He has taken time to explain, to talk, to reveal his innermost desire for Biafra. You have a person like, uh, I don't want to mention, I don't want to call him into this matter because what Ojuku did to Kensaro Wiwa is what I want Nam Kanu to do to Asari Dokubo. Kensaro Wiwa was just making noise and trying to challenge Ojuku in, 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 on air, maybe in the media, talking. So one day they were asking Ojuku, why is it that all that Kensaro Wiwa has been saying you don't want to respond? Ojuku said it's not it's not it's, there's no need responding to him he, do, he, he doesn't he doesn't want it that if he responds the media will carry it ojuku responds to ken sarowiwa and that will make sarowiwa popular so he decided to keep quiet and didn't talk to ken sarowiwa because his comments were irrelevant and when ojuku said that in ken sarowiwa's case just ended within the river state sub region of uh, delta Delta region. That was where it ended. So when you, as Adobeko is talking, please, nobody should, I'm, I'm appealing to a leader, don't talk to him. Just, for, we know what you have in mind. We know your program. We know your plans. We know your agenda. We know your vision. We know the passion in which you are carrying out everything that is in your life. We know it. So when the time comes, everybody will see who is who. So I'm appealing to you, or to us, Bia France. Let's stay in the same page. The leader we have is Mazin Nam Kano. They didn't say that everybody that follows him might be polite. A lot of um, IPOP members can abuse you, or that thing Nam Kano cannot control because people are talking. When you're running a revolution, you don't expect all the followers there to be educated. There are those who are not. There are those who see things only from the, the, the leader's perspective, and that's it. If you don't agree, fine. You can go to hell. That's what they think. Because for me, I believe in Jesus Christ. I don't believe in any other prophet. I don't believe in any other religion. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. So any other religion that exists on earth, as far as I'm concerned, they are all waste of time. They, pit, they, are, they are candidates from the pit of hell. And I have biblical proofs. All their leaders died and did not resurrect. Jesus was the only man that resurrected. So that gives Christianity hope, assurance, and confidence that since a servant is never greater than his master, if Jesus resurrected and was not held down by the grave or by death in the grave, I that believe in Jesus, the same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave will raise me up again on the last day to be with him. Yes, that's my faith. So if you believe any other man apart from Christ, did your Savior rise from the dead? No. Did your prophet rise from the dead? No. So where he is, there you'll be because a servant is never greater than his master. Now, Nabdekano has come up with an idea. America Livingstone never had that kind of idea. I had passion for the Igbo people. Yes, that's right. I believe so much in what Ikemba was doing. Ikemba smokes. He doesn't have, you know, very serious uh, moral this thing. But, but he had a vision. I'm looking at the vision of Ikemba. And I followed it. I had this thing in my spirit over the years. Until God brought somebody who is more informed about it than myself because that is the area god called him to function i have an area that god called me to function i am a minister if you want we can discuss bible from every dimension and perspective i have read the bible from genesis to revelation 15 times i have done a um, new testament i've read more than 40 times or 50 in my life so that is my own area of functionality but i am seeing a young man that god has raised up to speak against injustice perpetrated towards the Igbos and other um, tribes in general in Nigeria from uh, the, the Middle Belt, even the Northeast, uh, Northwest, South, South, uh, um, Southwest. He came up, the liberation of Biafra is going to go a long way to help the liberation of other sections of the country. The Middle Belt people are coming to their understanding now. They now know that Gowan didn't do it right. So please, I appeal to you Biafrans, IPOP members, let us stay in the same page, the same lane. Ahead of us, there is a man that God is leading. His name is Mazin Nandekano. 
as God led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he raised a man called Moses. He had his staff and went in front. They followed him. All those that wanted to rebel against Moses, that they were wiser, even Aaron and Miriam. Miriam had leprosy from God. And from what Aaron did, his ministry ended. And God told him when he got to Mount Pisgah that uh, he should remove uh, his clothes and put it in another person. Aaron died there. Don't God does not make mistakes. Therefore, it shouldn't be it should be me a Livingstone. God for God forbid. What I do is to follow the man that God has raised up. When he finished, we'll continue from there. He may not be perfect, but he's doing his job. No man is perfect, including you, no I. God bless you. And have a nice day. Let us all live as one. For Biafra is a given. In Hello. Uh, good morning from here. It's 11.44 a.m. Uh, this is Jamaica Livingstone talking. Uh, for some time I've not been appearing to talk because um, I just don't want to talk because we need to talk or maybe to gain followership or stuff like that. Uh, it has built up to an extent where I have to make responses. Basically, as a preacher of the gospel, I preach the gospel on Facebook and also I talk on issues that affect human beings in my country and other nations, especially where uh, leadership has failed to deliver the dividends of democracy, Nigeria being an example. Uh, my message this morning is uh, concerning the reaction of Hanez and Ibo and some Igbos who are against Namdi Kano and his vision and plan for the Biafran people. It it makes me feel uh, ashamed to see the daftness mm. that characterizes the Ohaneze hierarchy or intelligentsia. The Yorubas established Amoteko as a security network to protect their people from the in invasion and onslaught of the Fulanese. The Yorubas, they thought about it and they know that if the Yoruba race should be wiped off, the very few politicians, who are they going to rule or lead? And they established Amotekun. And you saw Yoruba uh, governors supporting this bold move because these guys have been killing Yorubas. The houses also started theirs in the north. Thank you, Masha. God bless you, my friend. Um, and the northerners were supporting them. Then when it came to the east, we formed the Eastern Security Network. I am seeing some Igbos opposed to Nnamdi Kano. I am seeing Ohaneze opposed to Nnamdi Kano because of political ambition. They want to sacrifice us on that altar so that they can achieve the ambitions which will never come to pass. It makes me so ashamed as an Igbo man that my people could be so daft and extremely stupid for all his education I am not here to abuse anybody I want to look at things objectively since the inception of this security outfit that is in the southwest and recently which was the last to be formed anyway of the three geographical regions because Nigeria is on a tripod three basic major ethnic groups the north the southwest which is Yoruba, the east which uh, basically is uh, dominated by Igbos in population then we have other ethnic groups which are equally very important to us each and every one of us now since the formation of this security outfit i am hearing the presidency saying they are going to stop the fulanese from invading land henceforth the Fulani man can never understand. The Islam, look, let me put it straight. 
the Muslim, the Islamic doctrine in Nigeria. I don't know in other countries. Maybe Islam is not as violent as it is in Nigeria. You don't have it like that in Britain. You don't have it like that in uh, Germany. You don't have it like that in France. But basically in Nigeria, Islam is not as violent like that in maybe Niger Republic or Chad or Cameroon or Ghana. These countries have Muslims. But the Nigerian question is different because the leadership is carrying out an agenda to Islamize the whole country down to the ocean and therefore let it spread within the uh, um, sub-region sub region of West Africa, the geographical region of uh, uh, West Africa. That's the sub-region. They are hell-bent on carrying out this project and they are killing our women, raping them, making our men wifeless, children fatherless, women husbandless. They take our girls by force, kidnap, abduct them, go to remote areas in Kano state, keep them there, marry them, sleep with them, bring children by them by force. And the, oh my God, the thing makes me go, I don't know, I don't, look, some men of God, you know, I, 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 I'm here to see a man of God, I mean a Pentecostal man of God, who is bold enough to look at the truth and speak it to the generation of this present day Nigerians. They tell you they are preaching the gospel. They are killing people. You, I'm, I didn't say take up arms to go and fight. Talk! The Catholic priests are talking. Because before this great nation, America, was formed, they fought for independence out there in the field. Before you could come here, you are a Nigerian in America, before you could come here to live and begin to preach the gospel, they fought for it. If, if they hadn't fought for it, you wouldn't be here. If slavery had continued unabated, you wouldn't be here. Because each black man was considered to third of a full white man. But the whites fought for the independence to see that people were liberated and they had freedom to live in this country. And you came into America and they are talking about what's going on in Nigeria, that the Igbos want out. They are in every part of the nation doing business, commerce and industry. I've never seen any detrabilized people like Igbos. I've never seen in the whole of Nigeria any people that want one Nigeria like Igbos. And over the years, whenever there are problems, they use us to settle their anger. So somehow God raised up a young man called Namdekano. And he came up with the idea, say, okay, since you don't want us to stay together, if your house get burnt in North in Kano, they say it's Dibo man. <laughs> if you do, don't do well in business in Yoruba land, you blame Dibo man. And the next thing is to burn their houses, kill their men, rape their women. We cannot sit down and watch our people being killed. If I had been killed, I wouldn't be alive today talking. You, you don't tell me that you, if you go and rape my wife, then you w want me to look at you, uh, you uh, be looking at you and be talking, or be negotiating for what? So when I see Christians who are here that, I have some Yoruba Christians who are men of God. One of them, I challenged him seriously on Facebook. He didn't talk again. Because for him to come to America, it means he wasn't mm. finding it fun in Nigeria. And at coming here, for him to be an American citizen, you have to swear an oath of allegiance to this country. He swore to stay. I wonder where he will stand to preach if there is no peace in this country. Now they are killing people in Nigeria. Nobody wants to talk. Igbos who come here have decided that they don't want to go back home again. And a lot of them are against Nam the Kano and IPOP. If you stay in America with your wife and your children, your father is in Nigeria, your brother is still in Nigeria, your sister, your uncle, your siblings, don't you care about them? What about the community where you grew up? What about friends that you grew up with as kids? How can you be so heartless because you have come to the white man's land? You say, no, you are not going back. Say, Don't mind IPOP. Don't mind Namdekano. The Fulani can never give you leadership. Go and read. Go and Google it. Go and study about Arab expansionism. They can never give you leadership. You're wasting your time. 
and the Yorubas are beginning to wake up to understand that there must be need for them to preserve their people. The houses who had already started and they were advancing to the east, you know, sending truckloads of Boko Haram individuals to come and show that when the time comes, they can always. Let me ask you you tell the Igbo man, don't come out of your house. There is lockdown, borders are closed in the east, in the west, and then in the north, the borders are opened. Those restrictions didn't reach there. And those guys leave the north, coming down to the east to take strategic positions so that when the time of invasion comes, they will find it easy. When are people at home sleeping in the night? You know, when the people are outside, so many of them, you cannot attack them. They can get together and resist attack. But when they are sleeping, you enter into homes. Nobody wants to come out in the night because it doesn't know who is at the door waiting. And you come and get a man and slaughter him, rape his wife in his presence before you slaughter him, rape his daughter, he kill his children, and go home. And the government doesn't do anything about it. And we have governors. We have governors. We have a man like Umahi, who has sold a bony state to, 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 to the Northerners to build the big, second biggest Islamic uh, 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 school, college. We have Ibazo. Look at Abba. Abba is a mess. 70% of the economy of Abia State comes from the financing that comes from Abba. And Igbazu does not have the understanding to know that fixing Abba roads is something that is very, very important to make sure that things work out. The Southeast governors, because of the ambition, they want to sacrifice the whole of the Igbos. I, I posted something on Facebook when um, the governor of Anambra State, what's his Obiano, he said that if any Igbo man is killed by Fulani, they're going to pay a fine of 500,000. So he put 500,000 naira. So the head of an average Igbo man, according to Obiano's understanding, mm. is valued at 500,000. So if the Fulani can raise 1 trillion naira, at 500,000 per head, you can be sure they're going to slaughter all of us and then pay him the compensation. Oh. Uh, I've never seen people as daft as Ohaneze, Southeast governors. They are the most, most unreasonable. I don't want to use, I don't want to use any language that might sound, but Believe me, they are very stupid. Nam the Kano kept quiet for some time. It's no cowardice. He's a strategist. I believe in that young man. I'm a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is the difference between the gospel and speaking in respect to a vision somebody has for his people. He is not asking for money. He's not buyable. The young man has proved himself. To be true, sincere, after the Ikemba, there has not risen any other person of the Igbo extraction as powerful, reasonable, reliable, and dependable like Mazin Namdekanu. Mm -hmm. Not even a single person. I don't believe in Dr. Namda I never believed in him. When I voted in 1979, we voted basically and purely on party lines. I was just 19 years old, so we voted for MPP. Remember, Zeke came into MPP and displaced Wazir Ibrahim, who later on formed GMPP, and with this, uh, this thing, politics without bitterness. Mm. MPP never won that election. MPM won it. But after that, I stopped voting because I never trusted any Nigerian political leader. So far, and I've not been wrong, even Buhari, though I supported his coming, I didn't vote for him. You ask me why? The reason is because I don't believe he can perform, but I said of the two evils, because of his historical antecedent, that he may be better. I read the story about Buhari, which somebody wrote. I read the whole book. I followed his, uh, his distance. But if those things were smoke screens, where we didn't see it, and now we have seen that that man is very terrible. 
And so when you see an Igbo man stand up against Namdi Kano, that Igbo man does not love the Igbos. He's only interested in his political ambition, which will never come to pass. It's never going to happen. If you, if you see a man of God who cannot speak the truth, Oyedepo came out plainly and has spoken against what's going on in the country. He's a Yoruba man. Which Igbo gospel minister has done that? They are still liaising secretly from behind with Ohaneze. If hopefully, somehow, presidency might come to the ways of the Igbo, then they will not just, you see how they connect and connect and go to Asorok and begin to be part of the, you know, administrative process. It's never going to happen. Because the God of heaven loves the people that you are preaching to, even though they are unbelievers. And when they are being slaughtered indiscriminately and you cannot get up to talk and speak against evil, speak against violence in your land, you are a preacher. Whom are you going to preach to? Okay, you don't want to speak, you are preaching the gospel, but you keep on emphasizing on tight, 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 tight. These guys don't have anything doing. The economic uh, um, activity in Abba has been grounded. Where do they get the money to pay the tight? You're only concerned with your vision, your empire, your ministry. As long as it begins to grow up, you're making money. Who cares about the members of the church? Those members have brothers and sisters that are being raped and violated. Oh, come on. Rise up, man. It hurts me. It's annoying me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Look at my face. I'm talking. If it becomes expedient that we have to go back to the east to defend Ibo land, we have to do it. Because you cannot go and rape my mother in the village and tell me to come and start listening to all this trash you are talking. You can't go and rape my sister in the village and you expect me not to talk. The black Americans today could only talk because they had people like Martin Luther King Jr. who was a Baptist minister. He spoke, he stood and spoke for his people. That's why the blacks have rights. And when it comes to the African man, the Igbo man, the, the Igbo man, particularly because of blind hunger for office and money, Ohaneze is a disgrace and it's a disappointment. They keep sabotaging Namde Kano from every aspect, from every dimension. This is a young man that God has raised. Why are we so blinded? We cannot see that this guy has something to offer. Why can't we see it? He's not asking for political position. If he wanted, they would have made him vice president. They would have given him money. He's not Bible. There is no price tag on his head. He doesn't fall to those gimmicks. He's better than Niamodo. He's better than Professor Mwapuese. He's better than Dr. Nam Dazikiwe. He's better than... Uh, I don't even like mentioning Minyos Mwike. If he chooses to be a man from the north, fine and good, this is right. People should stop saying that he's an evil man. He's not behaving like one because he's sabotaging the Igbos and asking the Northerners to come and pick them and go and lock them up there. So he's a Northern man. He's, 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 he's a full animal. That is by choice. It may not be by birth. So it's not an issue. When you see a person like Dave Umahi, who will, who will... I'm a little bit upset. What are you preaching as a, as a minister of the gospel? In Nigeria, it's only to take offering and tithe, give prophetic utterance that will expand and enlarge your ministry. You don't even care about the people. For your deacon in the church, they raped the father, they're sorry, the mother. They slaughtered the uncle. He's not happy. And you've not said anything about it. One day, oh pastor, they will rape your wife. Let me hear what you say. They will rape your daughter. They will kill your brother. Speak. We are not saying take guns and go and fight. But speak against injustice. Speak against lies and deceit. The Northerner will come and take an Igbo girl. Go to the North. Abduct her. Go there and start sleeping with her. Pregnant her. She will begin to give birth. Nothing will happen as if there is no law in the country. No Igbo man can speak on behalf of his people. Nandi Kanu came up with an idea on how we can get our self-esteem and respect. Let me give you a little history. When the war ended, let me tell you, I have a lot of Yoruba friends, very good friends, I like them. But let me tell you something. It was a war that told Gowon that hunger is a legitimate weapon of war. 
and therefore told him to block the flanks, the Calabar Portacot axis, so that their France cannot have supplies as to be sustained during the war. Nigeria did not win the war because they had good firepower mm -hmm. or they had good soldiers. What killed the Biafrans mostly was hunger. They blocked the flanks in Cameroon and uh, Portacot. Those were part of the reasons why we lost the Pakasi Peninsula to Cameroon. Because it was not ratified by the National Assembly. When Gowan, that man, that man Gowan, God will judge him and his generation forever. Now, now, when they, when, when they shut off the flanks, Amadou Ahijo was the president of Cameroon. And Gowan agreed with him, put a blockade that the Biafrans will not have supplies so that I can defeat this people. He agreed. But there was a condition attached to it. They were going to cede part of Nigeria, that is Bakasi Peninsula. Because when you go to Bakasi, there is what you call the Abana Beach. In uh, Abana there, you have the Bakasi West. That is where the Nigerian soldiers are stationed. Ab Bakasi um, at Atabong West. Then Atabong East is where the Cameroonian soldiers are stationed. In between them is the sea. I have been there. I went on evangelistic outreach to preach. I went into the hole where the commander, field commander was, in dog underground where they stay. And I interviewed the man. He told me that Abacha told him. I interviewed him personally. He told me that Abacha told him that before you start calling Dodan Barracks, if Cameroon shoots one bullet, begin to fire. Begin to, don't even wait, don't make phone calls. Start shooting. And that was how they were able to contain the excesses of the gendarmeries. And then recovered towns like Achibong, Jamestown, Abana. Pushed them back because they are taking, entered very, getting close to Oron. And so when that when that uh, arrangement was made, because if you follow that uh, uh, Bakasi Peninsula, that Atabon, that Bakasi Peninsula, that is uh, bounded by the east by Atabon uh, West, uh, Atabon East, West by Atabon West, that is Nigeria. If you go further down, there's a town called Obenikan where they sell, uh, they do crayfish. All these crayfish you see, that is where it's usually gotten. I've been to that town called Obenikan. So when these things happen, the agreement was. I am going to see this place to you for some time. For some time, because the Nigerian um, this thing has a house was to ratify it, whether that land will be ceded to Cameroon entirely or return back to Nigeria. They didn't because they are so lazy and stupid and unreasonable. The Cameroonians were wise and smart. They waited until the time reached that they could not do that ratification. They now had to go to International Court of Justice. And at the behest of Obasanjo's stupidity, he, when was being interviewed, said he was willing to concede the land if Nigeria loses that case. Abacha was not going to tolerate that. That is why I don't respect Obasanjo. Are you saying I have my reasons? And today, Cross River State has lost being an oil producing state in Nigeria, courtesy of Obasanjo's carelessness in talking and Gowan's wickedness in a bid to hurt the Igbos. That's how we lost that land. And now Nam the Kano is coming up with an idea on how to preserve the people from Cross River, um, Akwaibom State, River State, part of Kogi, and Delta States. And can you believe that his worst enemies, the people who are against him, are Ohaneze and Ibus, mm. some Igbo gospel ministers who don't care about human lives. What are you preaching when members of your church are saying they raped their mothers, they raped their sisters, they killed their brothers, their sisters, they took their farmlands, they burnt away their land, destroyed everything, cattle ravished, ate everything they had, their means of livelihood. Where are they going to pay the tithe from? Where are they going to give you the offering? You can't speak. It hurts me. I'm disappointed. I'm frustrated. And I'm very, very angry. I believe in Biafra. I am a Biafra. I believe in Namdi Kano is, is Godsend. Just set ministry aside from what he's doing. Because for America to gain independence, they have to go to the street to fight. The same thing with Britain. The same thing with other nations of the earth. And when it comes to that of an Igbo man, I wonder why a Yoruba man should be against. So it was a that told Gowon, 
put hunger as a legitimate weapon of war. And number two, the reason that Wolowo did was he reduced our financial status, no matter how much you had, to make 20 pounds in 1970. That the every Biafran man will start from the scratch, giving the Yorubas a head start. I tell you, brethren, I was at Aba in 1973 when the Koha market got burnt. Within three years, the Igbos were importers of cars. Have you heard of Mike Merchandise, electronics dealer? He dealt in electronics. John Anyehi, Anyehi, he was importing cars, Toyota Crown. Within three years, they were at the forefront because that's the ingenuity of Igbo man. The Lord has blessed him. And the Nigerian man is afraid. Keep on suppressing the Igbo man so they wouldn't give him a chance. Give us a chance. Give us a chance. Let us build so that Nigeria, the other nations can benefit from it. Give us a chance. We can build our own defense system. We can build our own networks. We can build our own intelligentsia. Look at our army. The moment Namdekano formed ESN, Eastern Security Network, everybody's shivering. Look at the volunteers. Look at the massive number of soldiers. I've never seen any people on earth follow one man like that because when the germans followed hitler it was under intimidation when the chinese followed chairman mao Zedong, it was under intimidation a lot of them were afraid of him uh, king jong un they're following him because they're afraid of him but in the country's own it is voluntary people love him they have seen somebody that is sincere straightforward truthful and you an evil man you are sabotaging namde kano and IPOP, you are not sabotaging them, you cannot alone. alone. You are sabotaging the future of your children, your daughters, your sons. You are sabotaging your culture, your name, your person. Because when they overrun everything, they raise up full and new sections in your villages and locality. Very soon they tell you your religion is not good. You have to adapt to their own. And that means they marry your daughters by force. According to Islamic doctrine, you are a second-class citizen. You are a vassal. If he's coming on the street, a Muslim is coming on the street, according to Islamic doctrine, you, you should not stand before him. You should give way, let him pass, because he's superior to you. Can you believe that? When you that is born again, you that serve God, you are the person that is of God, that is superior, and yet you don't show it. You walk in all humility to see if you can win them over to Christ. And an irresponsible man like Niamodo, and all those other stupid organizations under the ages of whether Igbo, whatever, I don't care. If you don't fall behind Nam Kano, you are missing it. Because all these years you had the opportunity, you never did anything. You are still talking about political leadership at a time when your people are always being annihilated. That was being killed, that was being removed. You are still talking about political leadership. Who is going to give it to you? Nobody will give it to you if you don't know. And if you don't like Biafra, fine, go ahead. Stop saying that the Eastern uh, uh, Security Network formed by Mnam Dekano is costing Igbo presidency. Oh my God, Ohanese, stop that nonsense. You can go ahead with your thing. No, no, no Igbo will support you. Anyone that chooses to support you is their business. But leave IPOP, leave Mnam Dekano alone. Let him run what God has shown him to run. And then when we are preaching, we are preaching the gospel. Because if they kill all Igbos, whom are you going to preach to in Abba? If all Igbos are forcefully converted to be Muslim, just Because our women that were abducted after the war were taken to the north. Abgadina Heba told him ham one by force. Nobody said anything. And those women now had children that 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 are, have turned out to become vagabonds that try to kill us today. They have no regard for your culture, they have no regard for your feelings. And somebody, Nnamdi Kanu did not tell any pastor, take up gun and come and fight, follow me. He's just running his thing, people are supporting him. If you don't know what to say, keep quiet and stop speaking. You you, you are the biggest sabotage in Igbo land. is the biggest sabotage in Igbo land. The five eastern governors are the biggest sabotages in Igbo land. Who doesn't know the history of Opus Adimma? You know his way back. Everybody knows him. He doesn't have the character which you can stand and look at his history and say, my son, look at how this man behaves. Follow his footsteps to become... You can't say that concerning Hopu Sodima. You cannot say that. You can't even say that concerning Richard Sukurocha. All of them have sold out. And one young man remained. He lost his father and his mother. They killed people because of him they wanted to kill him he was in jail for two years 
and he stood his ground. And God is lifting him up, raising him up. The blindness of our ministers is that they cannot even see somebody who is speaking for the evil. He's not speaking for the gospel, no. He's speaking for the evil. These are two different things. That is why all these gospel ministers in Nigeria who cannot speak the truth, I don't like listening to them on Facebook. Whenever I see your program on Facebook, I delete it from my, my post. A lot of you now are, have compromised. They do this Lenten period during Lent. Lenten. Something that was never practiced before in the faith. And it's not in the Bible. Pastors do Lenten period just to belong, to link up. And after you do that Lenten period, you have brought in doctrines that are contrary from the pit of hell. You come and start preaching victory in Christ or victory as a child of God. That's nonsense. Go and read Paul. He didn't preach the gospel. Read the our Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the gospel. Read Peter. None of you are doing those things. That's why when people talk against tithe, you want to crucify them. You are not a Jewish man that they should pay tithe to you. Which tribe are you from in Israel? And even if you identify a tribe as an evil man, are you of the Levitical priesthood? And is the law still functional? Because tithe was given for sanctuary service. There must be a place where you go to pay the tithe. That's right. And it's for the Levites that where the people pay tithe to the Levites, the Levites now pay tithe to the priests. The people don't pay tithe to the priests. And, and that was Old Testament. You are not a high priest. You are not a Levite. You are an ordinary man, maybe from Mbano, Isi Alangwa, Mbise, Arochuku. You are not a Levite. You cannot trace your genealogy to, to the Levitical priesthood. And even if you can, the temple in Jerusalem is no longer standing. So where do you take the tithe to? And the man that's going to pay tithe to you, which tribe is he from? From uh, from the, 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 the Jewish uh, this thing, background. Which tribe can he identify himself with? That's the problem. And and if he's going to pay tithe to you, oh, are you a priest? Because in this first Peter 2 9 says you are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Every born again Christian is a royal priest. We have only one high priest. His name is Jesus Christ. He never asked us to pay tithe. There's nowhere in the New Testament where it is mentioned. So tell me where the whole thing comes because basically what informs your thinking is the tithe money. What informs the politician's thinking is elective office. So both of you are just walking. The people are just mercilessly being dealt with. You don't care how they feel. You know when I preach, I don't. I'm not interested. I, I don't need tight from anybody. I work very hard. I make money. I work hard. Physically, I'm strong. Sixty years, I'm still very strong and healthy. I work hard to make my money, so I can look at you in the face and tell you that the the thing about tight is not biblical. It's not of God. And because of tight, you are willing to lower down your defenses so not as to speak the truth when something is going wrong in the land. You make reference to tithe in the Old Testament. Also make reference that Elijah was able to tell Ahab that you and your family have led Israel astray. Tell, tell, tell the government that since you make reference to the Old Testament in respect to tithe, make reference to the Elijah ministry that you so hold on to. You don't. You only choose the one you want to choose and drop the one you, you drop so that this one will benefit you, this one will benefit you. I'm so ashamed and disappointed. And that same goes for Igbo leaders within three years the Biafrans were able to make money that when they call her got burnt the Igbos cried they lamented over that thing and yet regardless of all the marginalization and suppression the Igbos have risen to glorious heights that even the Yorubas acknowledge right now we have one of the most popular personality that is coming out of Nigeria all around the whole world, Sanibu man. His name is Nandekano. And the Yorubas are becoming wise. They went and picked uh, this man, this guy, uh, who was of, uh, he's now for Odwai Post Congress, who, who was a tout. They made him an apostle. What is his name? He's it, it, now the area on Akaka for Yoruba land. What's that young girl man's name? I've forgotten. He, he, the Yorubas went and picked him. The church called him and made him an apostle. The Yorubas made him the Are of Onaka, uh, Are Onaka Nkafo. Are you seeing? They made him 
They are using their own brain to see what they can do to liberate their people, even though their modus operandi is not correct. Because one man cannot be an apostle and also be an abro. But the point is, they took him in. They are defending him and helping him. They have formed Amotekun. The governors came out, took salute, did it. When he came to the east, the eastern governors, may God forgive your souls. Because whatever you are doing, the whatever you are doing shall definitely affect your own children. They are against Namde Kano that he brought in the Eastern Security Network. And that network has the capacity of stopping Fulani invasion. Why are you against it? Maybe you are jealous that the man is far outgrowing you in, in popularity and respect. So what? It hurts me so much to understand that the Igbos, Igbo leaders, are sabotaging mm. Namdi Kano and IPOP. It hurts me so much. It makes me feel bad. It, it hurts me to the very depth of my being. That you are not that you don't know the history. It is just that you are deliberately selfish and wicked. You are a seller. You will never be. You will never get that presidency. Never. As long as the Jew Republic Nigeria stands. You will never get the presidency. Go and fight it out. Go and try. Do your best. You wouldn't. But I know someday that Biafra will materialize. That nation will come again that has been. I know one day. Because when Martin Luther and others were fighting for the liberation of African Americans, it looked like they were just joking. But as time progressed, they began to build cloud. They began to build crowd. They began to build support. And it came to pass that today the African American man can stand and speak and seek elect elective position and, and, and be recognized as a voice. One day Biafra will stand. I believe in it. And when that time happens, all those wicked Ohanese people, if somebody say you are being judgmental, they should be they should be they should be blacklisted so that both them and their children will never at least give them 50 years. To, to, to handle any position in Biafra land. Because they are wicked. Their children are all grown up. They, they know all these things that their fathers are doing. They can't come out on TV and speak against their fathers. Nyamodo has grown up sons. Nobody can come out and tell his father now. When, when that time comes, you want us to forgive you and allow you to come and contest. All you gospel ministers who are working all your wayo and all these things, you are hoping. You, some of you are standing on the fence. If Nigeria works, you stay in Nigeria. If Biafra works, you flow in Biafra. You cannot make a decision. I am a Biafran. That's what I am. If I preach the gospel, you don't like it, fine. But the point is, I tell you the truth. If you don't give your life to Christ, you will go to hell. That's the, that's the truth. I, I don't need the offering. I'm walking. I don't need it. The Bible talks about offering. I don't need it. I'm walking. God is going to keep me strong. I walk until, if the Lord tarries, I'll be alive till 120 years. I've spent 60 years now on earth. I have under 60 years more. To complete mm -hmm. if the lord tarries i'll be alive till 120 before i die if he doesn't tarry and come before then oh glory be to god we'll go to heaven if i die in the process of my faith fine so all these things you people are doing in nigeria there in america here summer Igbos come to america they, they 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 don't want to go back to Igbo land they keep talking nonsense it was not the Igbos that brought the situation in Nigeria. It is bad governance from the east, uh, sorry, from the southwest <coughs> and from the north. The Igbos have never had opportunity for leadership. When you say the Igbos love money, who are those that ate Nigeria's money? It's not Igbo man. Who are those that run Nigeria's currency down? It's not Igbo man. Who are those that having oil blocks? It's not Igbo man. Where are you blaming the Igbo man now? What have we done? The, the Calabar port should be an export processing zone, just like in Dubai. The government has refused to develop it. They have refused to develop the Wari port. They have refused to develop, even Oron can be developed as a port. They have refused to develop a, a, a can in Calabar. They have refused to develop the inland waterways in Onitsha, the River Niger. Everything has been focused on Lagos, and now they are opening dry port in Daura, and, and a, a, a very inconsequential, nondescript rag rag tag of 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 of, 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 of what do I call it? A ghetto is being made a dry port, and and the Igbo man who is 
there in the authority cannot sit down and think. We have natural seaport in Potakot. We, in Guacha, we have it in a, uh, um, there's no international airport in, in the whole of the East. What has Katsina State got to offer in terms of economic activities that have an international airport? What do they have? The, the bulk of the business come from the Southwest and the Southeast. What do others have? But they have all, all these things. You cannot get up and speak because you want to serve your full and master. Namdekan is better than you. You all know it. All of you join together. Namdekan is better than you. The only man who has stood up for Ibos was the Kemba. After him is this young man. And if you don't believe in him, it is to your own peril. Because what God has started, he's going to finish it. That's all I have to say. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. This is Emeka Livingstone. I'm so sorry I had an earlier uh, broadcast that was going on and somehow it went off the air, so I had to cancel it to start all over again. Uh, my concern is what's going on in Nigeria. And I was making an address before that there are two governments on earth that God recognizes. We have the, the government that is theocratic, that is the government of God that concerns the church, which the world is not subject to, but will judge the world when the time comes. And then we have the government of the world which the church is subject to, and can also stand to correct the world when they are making wrong moves or doing the wrong things so we as the people that belong to christ can see where there is injustice going on in the land and we speak i might not take up arms to kill mm -hmm. somebody but i can speak against ungodliness bad governance so men of god have uh, been challenging me even in america here that why don't I just concentrate in preaching the gospel and forget what's going on? And I laugh at their ignorance because this America where we are staying today fought for their independence, fought for their freedom and liberation. And that's why we could come here and settle and walk and preach the gospel. This revolution went, went on in France, went in Russia, in Britain, in China. In Malaysia and so why wouldn't it went on in Cuba and today men of God go to these countries and preach the gospel if they hadn't done it if the peasants had allowed themselves to to be killed or the people who would you go to preach to I see some Nigerians who are here that say they don't want to go back home they love America they will remain here forever they forget where they come from that they have parents brothers and sisters so when those men of God tell me, why do you talk like this? I look at them and laugh because they are ignorant. If they hadn't had the visa to come to America, they would have been in Nigeria. And what's going on would have affected them. They would have been the ones shouting, crying, and hollering, come to our aid and rescue. So what I'm trying to say today is this, that the leaders of Nigeria have consistently failed the youth. Um, a man of God sent a write-up on Facebook in my page and was saying when Kowan went into government, he was 32 years, Obasanjo was, I think, um, 29, um, JTY Danjuma was within his late 20s and early 30s, and that our youth should take a cue from them. I told him no. The situation then was, we just had an independence. And these young men were leveraged by appointments into being in situations where they could take the realms of government. Our elders then were not as educated as we have these ones. And therefore, they could take over the government and make sure that they ruled Nigeria. 
Now, those young men that rule Nigeria, they have become old, recycled, and they are still ruling Nigeria today. Thus, blocking every avenue for young people to succeed us. Those old men like Obasanjo was in government a couple of years, a few years ago. Yaradua that died, um, JTY Danjuma that is making noise everywhere because this problem is now affecting Taraba State. They were the ones that stood against what Biafra was fighting for. General Gowan, who is praying all his fake prayers when the lives of Igbos that were slaughtered, Nigerians that died on both sides was by his mistake. So let's look at the issue boldly mm. and face it. When Namdi Kanu came up with this idea of Biafra, at the onset, I wasn't very given to it. But as the man kept talking, I began to realize that he was making sense. And he was trying to awaken the youths into knowing that their future is already been mortgaged by elders and that unless these elders give way, they have no future. Because up to now you have civil servants that are 72 years of age still in government, politicians that are 75, 60 something, 80. And you see a young man who is a genius, who is very intelligent, he went to university, despite the fact that all the strikes that have taken place in the time of Obasanjo, there was no strike for him to go to school in the time of Gowan, in the time of uh, Buhari, in the time of uh, Yaradua, uh, but, uh, the former uh, Sheikh Musa Yaradua, the time of Shagari, Amadou Bello. They had opportunity to go to school. The system was good and they could go to school and come back. By the time you graduate, they, as you're doing your final year degree, companies like Lever Brothers, USC, Leventis United, they will begin to send letters to you that you can apply to get a job. They'll give you a flat, give you a car. It's not so. A young man came, uh, elders blocked everything. We blocked everything and frustrated the young men took their position and the young men are feeling bad. When you see a young girl, she blame them that they went into prostitution. What would you expect a young girl to do if after going to university and coming out she doesn't have a job? How does she take care of herself? You want her to be a good girl. And when the, the youth react, you say they are miscreants that went to uh, the warehouse to break and take food. The person who stored the food there that was a palliative meant for the COVID period is much is more of a miscreant than the youth that went in there to discover that this food is not supposed to be here, it's for the masses. Our politicians have become so degenerate and depraved that stealing money is not enough. They have resorted to stealing bags and bags and bags of food stuff like rice and stuff like that and storing them. They won't eat the food. They just keep them there. That is to show how degenerate their mind is. For all the money that they made in life, I thought that by now, when a man begins to grow old, he begins to groom the younger ones to take over from him, to continue from where he stopped. These younger ones to groom the younger ones that will come after them. To, that's how addition, the, the, the engine of growth and development keeps moving on, being oiled oiled by youth that renews the capacity of a country to succeed in lengthy times of uh, you know challenges and development but it's not so in nigeria what you see in nigeria is old men i saw the pandem they had their meeting the other day there was a uh, asari dokubo there was um um edwin clark there was the Ohanese people, they, was, they started talking that they are looking for a structuring. It's like they just got up from sleep, what Namdi Kano has been telling them all this while. And we don't need them. They don't even need me, the new generations don't need me in their government. I'm 60 years old, they don't need me. We want young men who are 25, who are very smart and intelligent, young girls who are smart and intelligent, who can see further and better than we do, who can take risk. All we need to do is to stay behind and guide them, but allow them to make their mistakes. They're going to get, get on fine. They'll do well. 
They don't need us. We don't need Edwin Clark in Nigeria. And in fact, we're not even talking about one Nigeria again. We're not talking about restructuring because it's not working. The contraption is not working. I argued with a man of God that was trying to praise Kuka, Reverend Kuka, that Buhari fought for one Nigeria during the war. Why is he spoiling it? The people who fought for one Nigeria during the war were the Igbos. They wanted Nigeria to function as an entity successfully. But everything was sabotaged by Gowon, Yaradua, T.Y. Danjuma, and the Oba of Benin, who was uh, a civil servant then. Remember the meeting they had with General Ankara in Ghana, in Aburi. Ojuku went there, Gowan went there. The Oba of Benin was part of that uh, team that went there. He was then a young man. He was the one that told uh, um, Gowan, don't do, don't implement. I, I don't, I don't know. No, he was not there. It was the former Inspector General of Police, Kam Salem, that was there. I remember him. Now the Obo Benin was among those who advised Gowan not to heed to the Aburi understanding which Ojuku, Gowan, and General Ankara had in the presence of Kam Salem, the former Inspector General of Police. And the agreement was: let there be a confederation, let there be strong regional governments and the weak center that take up diplomatic issues. Then we begin to develop at our pace and see the possibility of us coming together as our mindset begin to grow. Gowan agreed, but when he came, they told him to do the wrong thing. He bought the idea and refused to announce as they agreed that as soon as he reaches Nigeria, he's going to announce the Aburi Accord to the whole of Nigerians. Since Ojuku mm. waited and waited and Gowan could not do it, Ojuku had to say it. You won't believe it. I was only seven years old when Ujuku addressed the, the world. I, I, my father put on the radio and I listened to his address. That was when the zeal to be a Biafran started. I understood that, yes, I don't belong here. Believe me, I tell you, apart from 1979, when we voted along tribal lines, when I voted for MPP, I've never voted for any government in Nigeria, up to even Buhari that came. Even though I was part of those that supported the change that we're expecting, but I didn't believe in him because we didn't have a better deal. <laughs> and so, when Gowan refused to do according to the Aburi Accord, Ojuku had to say it. And when he said it, he was considered to be a rebel. Now, this same man who have consistently held sway to power and doing nothing, to change the Nigerian situation are still clamoring now for a restructuring. There is Edwin Clark there. When he was a federal minister, he was just about 20 something years old. What is still what is he still doing? I ask a lot of questions that make me go crazy. Is it rocket science to dredge the river Niger in Onitsha? Is it rocket science? A Calabar port is EPZ, export processing zone. The vision was by now, Calabar would have been a gateway for business. When I went to Dubai at the airport there, at the airport, is Dubai is an, is, is, is an export processing zone. You, you buy things there, you, you do business without tax. It creates opportunity for the government to get in revenue and export it out. So it balances the equation. That was what, what Calabar Port was programmed to do. They refused to do it. <laughs> the second one, why is Port Harcourt Port not working? Why must everything be concentrated in Lagos? And now we have dry port in Daura. Can you imagine? It's crazy. And somebody is telling me, hey, Mecca Livingstone, you are a man of God. You should concentrate in preaching. Preaching to who? That's sheer hypocrisy. People are dying in Nigeria. Young men are you, you, young men who who are so innovative, got out on their own, regardless of the very unfavorable economic climate. Governments, success, successive governments, have consistently imposed upon Nigerians. Young men of this time could, out of their own ingenuity, go into business that gave them money, good business. And you see a young man of 25, 26 driving a car on the road. You hold him and say, he's a Yahoo Yahoo boy. 
you take his money, you beat him, you take his ATM card, you mess him up. You are telling the young man you shouldn't succeed. Who is who is who is who is financing all these things? Wicked politicians. BBC came out and said, um, sorry, a, a news a paper report uh, on um, YouTube or I think on. It came out from America here and said they have evidences to prove that the soldiers opened fire on peace protesting youths, civilians. Who gave them the authority? Those are the people that don't believe in Nigeria. So when Edwin Clark and Ohanese are talking about restructuring, these people are so wicked. They should, they should get away from the system, get out. Margaret Thatcher finished her job and went home and retired and died later on. The same thing with the, the former presidents of uh, Britain and America. They go to the background, let people that are fresh do something, bring up their ideas. Because we have bright young men and young women. I have seen them. If you come to America here, we have the best crop of doctors and Nigerians. They do well in the class academically. The whites know that. They deal with us. They I have my friends who are white men. They like to tinker with me and ask me my opinion. A lot of things happen in the world which they don't know, even in their country. And so you see that it is outright wickedness of the elders of the land not to allow the youths have a say in their own future. You make them lose respect for themselves. You make them lose value for themselves. It is these same elders that will go and pick these young girls that are 20, 23, 24. They are visitors, um, senators, and put them in the hotel and be messing them up, taking away their future. And these girls are supposed to be mothers of tomorrow. You have violated her, messed her up. She's 21. She's 22. It's not fair. When Gowan says Nigeria prays, I laugh at pastors who go and back up with Gowan to pray. Have they forgotten those Igbo pastors? Let me address Igbo pastors. Have you forgotten that Gowan supervised the killing of Igbos during the 1967 civil war? Have you forgotten? What is he praying? Have you forgotten that there was a systematic, systematic uh, 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 this thing, uh, execution of deliberate policy in Nigeria not to allow any Boman to grow beyond the level of a colonel in the armed forces or at most being a brigadier. Are you aware? It was under Gowan's government. And the Four Square Gospel Church will invite Gowan to come and address them. What a shame. What a shame. Men of God will gather. They, they, they don't even talk. They cannot. Can you imagine a, a, a Elijah tolerating Ahab's nonsense in Israel. Or they hear a scandal of where you will have jets. All the monies that are contributed to your ministry makes you super rich. Somebody said, as of 2005, more than 15 trillion, I don't know how, how he got his statistics, but was what was uh, remitted by the church into the various bank accounts in Nigeria. Yet within the church, people are suffering. They are dying of hunger. They cannot afford one, one solid meal, one good meal per day. That's the reason why I don't take tithe and offering, apart from the fact that it's biblically wrong. Because one, you are not a Levite. You are not from Israel. The tithe was given to the Jews to operate temple worship. God separated one of the tribes from the nation of Israel, the Levites, and say, you stay in the temple without distraction, serve me, the, every tithe that was to be given to me, eat it, and make sure that all the uh, services and ceremonies will be done to give, to bring glory to me. And so whenever a Jewish man wants to pay his tithe, he has to identify himself from which tribe he pays to the Levite. The Levite now pays tithe to the priests. And then the priests will now pay their own to God. That is that particular part that God told Aaron that it must be born to him. So the Levites pay, pay, pay tithe to the priests, tithe of tithe. Are you a Levite? You are not. Are you from Israel? You are not. You are a thief. 
and you go and check Malachi, begin to say, if you don't pay tithe, you are a thief. That was referring to the Jews. In the New Testament, Jesus never took tithe. Neither did Paul, the apostle, nor Peter. And we are founded upon the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. For the Bible says that if perfection had been by the Levitical priesthood, under which the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise out of the order of Melchizedek and not being called the, uh, mm. out of the order of Aaron. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. The law that governed tight was changed because the priesthood had changed in Matthew chapter 17 in Transfiguration when Elijah, Moses, and Jesus stood in the mountain. Elijah represented the prophets, Moses represented the law, Jesus is the grace. These three offices that were anointed in the Old Testament, the king, the priest, and the prophet, were all given to Christ, for in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when Elijah and Moses left, the voice said, This is my only begotten son, whom I will be seeing him. To confirm Hebrews 1.1 1, 1, that says, God, who has sundry times and in diverse manners, spoke unto our fathers in time past through the prophets, as in this last day spoken unto us by his son, whom he has made the heir of the whole world. That is the truth. And stop all these stealings you people are stealing. That's why you cannot speak the truth. Kumu, you went to see uh, um, 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 Buhari? Nothing. I heard this a prayer warrior in Asoro. But at the boy went to see Buhari. Nothing. None of them can boldly speak against wickedness that is going on in the land because they have compromised. That's why I stand for Biafra. That's why I believe, listen. When you run a revolution, you don't expect people to be polite. Go and read about the revolution in China. Read the one in Russia. You don't expect anybody to be polite. It, it, the main leader is the person you should look at. And if the man has something to offer, like Nnamdi can listen to him. A people's identity can be changed by changing their name. The name Nigeria never existed before 1914. We had a different regions. We had the, the Yorubas, the Duduwa Kingdom. We had the Biafra, which was from the, 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 the land, the, the, the sea land between Equatorial Guinea and the southern part, south southern part of Nigeria, up to Otrupo or somewhere in Benue State, and then Akwaibon River State. We have a kind of cultural identity, the way we wear our clothes, the kind of food we eat, our tradition, it's, it's unique. It's similar. It's different from that of the Duduwas. It's, it's, it's evident. But when the white man came, he wanted to erase everything about your dignity and your integrity and your person. He changed your name. That was what they did to the African Americans. They brought them here from their country, changed their names, erased every trace of their culture from them. None of them asked African names again. Well, yes, Wilkins, Higgins, that's what the white man did. And that's why they don't have a culture. They can't really identify themselves. And that's what they did to Nigeria. They brought three regions. They did not allow the people to determine, are we going to stay together? That was the reason for the confederation of Juku advocated for. It's a shame. Nigerian leaders have failed. Nigeria as a contraption is not working. Those pastors who are praying that Nigeria will be one. They are wasting their time. It's not going to happen that way. We want the various ethnic nationalities to have their self-determination to, to, to decide where will they pitch their tent. Middle birth has come into understanding. And I know Danjuma is feeling the pinch. But when he was dealing with the Igbos in those days, he didn't, I thought he was the one Nigerian man. The same thing goes to go one. The, the Yorubas, the Duduwas, have their mm. own, uh, if they stay on their own, the Biafran stay, the Middle Belt stay. Look at what's going on in Kaduna. They were killing Christians there. Couldn't Adeboye talk? Couldn't he come out to say that this is wrong? It was Donald Trump that was speaking from America on behalf of Nigerians. We have men of God there. And they were killing, slaughtering Christians in Kaduna. Killing them, nobody cared. The time when they attacked at Deboye's church, they wanted to attack his church. You know what he said? If you find anybody within the periphery, kill him. Because it had to do with his business, his resources. The same thing with Johnson Suleiman. But they are killing people in Kaduna. Nobody's talking. 
Nobody cares. And Namdi Kano has been talking and talking. Not just Biafra. He's talking. Nigerians, open your eyes. They changed your name so as to change your identity. These people who are killing us are not much. But they use, with the, with the, with the, uh, with the assistance of the British, they, they had to fry our brains and we became vassals forever where they are. That is why I have people like Hopu Zodima is a vassal to the Fulani Caliphate. Oh, Dev Umahi, my friend, the man of God was praising Dev Umahi some time ago. He's a, an epitome of a good leader. Stuff. He, he, he nearly sold the Bonny State to the Fulani Caliphate. And yet people are not bold enough to identify with Namde Kano and IPOB in what they are fighting for, for you and I, our benefits. The young man has said he's not interested in governance. He wants his people to be free. He's not only referring to the Biafrans, he's talking to the Duduas. The Yorubas are beginning to wake up to understand the need for them to make their declaration. Because as long as Yorubas stand with the Fulanese, liberation will be a difficult thing. We have failed. It's a shame, it's a disgrace. Men of God in Nigeria cannot speak the truth. You are lying. You have compromised your position. I'm, I'm not afraid of anybody. I, I don't take tight and offer. Look, I work. I work with my hands and make my money. And if I can look at you and tell you the gospel, free, did I receive, free I give to you. The reason why people, people cannot speak the truth is because they have mortgaged their conscience. Mm. They know that is where their, their resources come from. And therefore they are willing to make all compromises, even at the expense of the lives of their congregants, just to make sure that their ministry keeps moving. You are talking about faith. You have faith in God. You bless the congregation that nothing will happen to you. Your son has a retinue, retinue of uh, 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 this thing, bodyguards following Adeboe's son about. Where is the faith? I don't see the faith. Lazarus Moka will tell you, put this uh, gap. It's a, a bullet for chosen. But, but he himself goes about with those that will protect him. All these things are fake. COVID has just made us realize, listen, there was pandemic in the book of Acts. Go and read the Bible in between the lines to see the truth. The Bible says, and they brought to Peter those that were me and halted and having very, various diseases and infirmities and pestilences. They brought them that even the shadow of Peter could land on them and they got their healing. Why is it not happening now? When this pandemic, because the church is a place where you run to, when there's this pandemic, they see the power of our God for the whole creature awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. It is not standing on the pulpit and making noise and talking big and giving them strategies for financial breakthrough. That is not the manifestation of the sons of God. When Jesus says, when I cure the sick among you, cast out the demons and raise the dead, it means the kingdom of God is come upon you. That's the kingdom of God. It comes upon somebody that is sick, he gets his healing. So COVID should have been a, 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 a case for us to prove the God that we worship and serve. As people come to church, they go back healed. What happened? Even the church were putting on masks and maintaining six feet distance. It's all fake. Churches don't preach the gospel to win souls. They preach to bring in members. I have seen people who are, who are, poor, who, who are ordained pastors by men called into the ministry to be pastors by men they were not called of god because the grace of god will only sustain you where the will of god has led you true pastors are never recognized i don't need recognition from nobody that's why i don't put on color it's not the hood that makes the monk we have to read the bible and speak the truth and live the life anybody that is rising against the youth in nigeria is a wicked man it's an evil man Anybody that will not speak the truth is a liar. And those of you who are speaking against Namde Kano in Ibo land, let me tell you, Biafra will come to pass as a success. You will face the music, unless you have to run away. Because everything you did mm. to frustrate and sabotage the cause of Biafra showed that you are anti-Ibo, anti-Biafra, anti-Nigerians, anti-freedom, anti-liberation. You will pay for it. We are not saying take gun and go and shoot. Say something. That's what the prophet does. You are a pastor, a preacher, an apostle. Say, speak against lies. Speak against deceit. You don't want to say it. 
you are busy, you say you are doing your ministry, you give the attitude of somebody who is pious, very quiet moving, he's a gentleman preacher, in your heart is wickedness. People are dying every day, you cannot speak against it, you go to your bed and lie down and sleep. Without caring that that woman, they killed her son. That girl, they killed her husband. That man, his only son was killed. That girl, they killed her brother. And families are bereaved. And you are watching it. And you go to Buhari and begin to beg him. They are telling you that this man is evil. Speak against it. Some of the palliatives that were given were given to pastors to share to members. They, they kept, we will find you out as time progresses. All the bags and rice you kept, the money collected. The revolution has started. When the time comes, everything that was hidden shall be unearthed. And you are going to be in trouble. Can you, how can I for every, for all reason, reasoning, think that I will take my family to America and stay, I don't care what happens in Nigeria, God forbid. I am a man of God. I believe in Jesus Christ. But let me tell you the truth. If you take a weapon to kill my wife and I'm there, bro, look at my face. Look at me very, very well. I'm not going to look at you and laugh with you. If I take that weapon from your hand, that's the end of you. In self-defense. For the Bible says a man should lay down his life for his wife. Nam Kanu is a leader, as an example, who is unviable in the process his father and his mother died. If it were Hopus or Dima, he would have taken bribe to be the vice president of Nigeria and then threw away the, the Biafra cause. Nam Kanu has consistently stood his ground, has refused to collect this money. Who do we have in Biafra land that is as honorable and a man of integrity like that young man among those who are pastors and ordinary people? Show me just one single one among the politicians. That is why I hurt. If it becomes expedient, I'm saying it, I don't want to be part of anything that will, you know, tomorrow you say a man of God, two guns to go and fight. But if it becomes a spirit, look, for you to be an American citizen, they do ask you a question. Before they make you a citizen, they ask you, if, are you willing to take up your gun to fight in defense of America if there is a war? So all those men of God in America here who are talking mm. trash, that was the question that was asked them. They said yes for them to get the citizenship. And when you are preaching, speaking against wickedness that's going on in Nigeria, I tell you, why don't you preach the gospel and win souls? But he answered the American people, I am willing to take up gun and go to war in defense of America. What are there? In wickedness, who name In a man, you are doing that thing because it, it, this is a land where you have milk and honey. You, you forget that you should build your own country too. You should build Nigeria. You should build Biafra. You should build the Duduwa Republic. Nigeria is not even a name that we should even receive. We have a name which we, the people, will collectively agree and say, this is our name. Because a name is homogeneous to the people. It's, it's organic to them. It has to do with their lifestyle, their culture, their behavior, their upbringing, upbringing their idiosyncrasy. It's something that is homogeneous to them. It is not something that is important. It's not a contraption by somebody who doesn't know what is going on. You just bring three people together and gather them, put them there and say they should stay together for economic reasons, exploiting them. And the, the marriage just couldn't work. We want out. All the ethnic nationalities should be free. Let Middle Belt decide where they will go. If they want to go to the north, that's their problem. If they want to stay on their own, they have intelligent young men and women in Middle Belt that are capable of doing it. I have friends. That's why I talk to my friend from Kaduna State. He should forget about his dream for Nigeria. The people in Duduwa Republic have they have abundance of intelligent people whether in America, Britain, Australia, everywhere in Nigeria, they can handle their country. The Biafran, same. Let the Hausa Fulani, let the Fulani stay. The Hausas themselves can organize themselves. Up to today, the richest people in Nigeria are these oldies who stole money and they're still, the, Dan Juma has an oil block. That is, that one annoys me, it annoys me to the very depth of my being. That man called Dan Juma, he's, the, he's part of the problems Nigeria has. Babangida stole so much money and institutionalized corruption. He has his big house in, in Minade. But apart from that house he has, all the houses around him are poor people. What sense does it make? It's not rocket science to build roads. It's not rocket science to build airports. We have international airports in the north. The main economic hub of Nigeria, south, south, south and east, southeast, 
don't have international airports. They gave it to them there. They have a dry port there. If you want to import everything, you go to Dara to buy cars. Can you imagine that? It's a deliberate. I wonder why Igbo ministers, Igbo people are so stupid, especially the Wanese. Look at what is happening. You are hoping that you will go through election to remove them and be the president. Kano State has more than how many local governments? 44 local governments. That ha that is more than the local government of about two, two or three states combined together. <laughs> two or three or four states combined together. Kano alone. Tell me, how do you defeat them in the National Assembly if you want presidency? It's not going to work. It is embedded in the in the Islamic doctrine that you are a vassal. You can never be equal to him. And as long as he has that power, he will never relinquish it. They made that mistake during the time of Jonathan. They don't want to do it again. That's why Buhari's death or being alive is a controversy. Because they know if anything happens, Obasanjo um, or Sibanjo will take over. They don't want it. Obasanjo set the templates that put the awesome man in, 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 at, at a very tight corner when he came and monetized so many things. And then from there, Yeradua came in, he died, Jonathan took over. And these people said, no, it's not going to happen again. Don't you know, Niamodo or Nemage, every day you are fighting Nandekano, somebody that God raised up in our midst to help us realize ourselves. And in the new Biafra Republic, Niamodo will not have a place. All these politicians, these thieves like Hopus or Dimwa, Rochas or Kurochonyausa, they can never have a place in that government. And yet people are telling us to call them to come and help us make a dialogue. We don't need them. I'm not interested in governance. If we have a Biafra today, I'm coming back home to preach the gospel, to win souls. So it has nothing to do with it. That this young man is doing a good job, he's doing it, support him. I believe that Namde Kano is sent by God to do a job. It has nothing to do with whether he's called into the ministry or not. That's out of question. I am telling you the role is playing. No Igbo man, apart from the Kimba, has played it so far. And every man who is going to be a hero and a leader normally sacrifices his life. Ojuku sacrificed his father's property, his name, his reputation, his education, his life for Biafra. He never got a job again till he died. The same thing with Namde Kano. Raf was Ruke could not do it because he compromised. He was compromised. Neither can Nyamudu do it. Neither can Professor Mbazuliki or whatever they call him do it. Neither can Hopus or Dima do it. Neither can Okeze Bazu do it. All these people are thieves. It's very simple for them to build the roads in Aba. What is so difficult? Aba contributes 70% of the revenue generated by Abia State. Why not make investment there and get more revenues? Because is that a big thing to do? You make the money. Your security vote alone. It's enough to fix roads in Aba. Why can't you do it, okay, Jake Bazo? Because you're a thief. The same thing with Dave Umayi. The same thing with Topu Zodima. The same thing with Uguani of uh, Enugu State. The same thing with uh, this guy of uh, Obiano of Anambra State. It's a shame. It's not record science. The, the same railway project that was built in Ethiopia, that was done in Nigeria, that of Ethiopia was cheap. That of Nigeria ran into billions. Why? Because you guys are crooked. You're thieves, you're wicked. You don't love Nigeria. The leaders of Nigeria never believed in Nigeria. So when the youth are raising up now, don't blame them. When Biafra is saying we want out, it is not rebellion. We want to determine ourselves. We don't need to depend on you again because you have failed us all around. If we continue, we'll become stooges to colonial masters that are using the Fulani Caliphate to hold us to ransom. That is why most of the Igbo leaders and politicians are glorified their own boys. We don't believe in them. Our youths must go on. I support our youths and I support Biafra. I support the various ethnic nationalities to go on their way for their self-determination. And by the way, Mazin uh, Namdekanu, please, just don't uh, listen to Asarido Kubo. He's entitled his opinion. You know, I don't want to go into so many things, but just let him, let him, he will just, when the time comes, he will just be swept away by the side. Carry on with what God has told you to do. Focus on the job, the business you're doing. You have a support. I, 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 I am an ex of my hand. I left in 1979. I'm sure you guys came when we had left. And I see that touch of that thing in your life. And I see the hand of God upon you carrying out this project. So I'm not here to begin to consider whether Unam Dekano is a man of God or it's not. A, no, that's not the issue. The point is that he's a, he's a revolutionary 
who has a vision given to him by God is moving on and he has a backing. At the end of the day, Biafra shall be actualized. Middle Belt shall actualize. Oduduwa Republic shall actualize. And if the um, Kaduna people want to mink, fix up with Middle Belt or any of their this thing, let them actualize. We can on our own, individually form our own nations and build our own pace on our, at our own pace, form our own laws, bring out our hearts to do the job that has to do with our nation and do it very well. God bless Biafra. God bless IPOP. God bless MNK. God bless all the various regional republics, you know, Duduwa, Middle Belt, and others. Amen.